So you got Boar, right? And then you got De Broglie, and De Broglie comes in and starts explaining why there might be certain radii that are allowed and others are not. <clears throat> but then Schrodinger writes down an equation for how quantum things move and quantum mechanics is born. So this little bit is called odds are there's an electron around here somewhere. I've got a hydrogen and I know that the electron is in the n equals one ground state. So I'll just label that right here. If the electron is in the ground state and I measure the location of the electron, let's say 300 times, I might find those locations to be plotted with dots right here. Notice that there's a very small chance of finding the electron really close to the nucleus, and there's a very small chance of finding the electron very far away from the nucleus, but there's this distance at which it's pretty common to find the electron. Also, this is spherical. You need to think of this as a ball shape. It's obviously very hard to draw that. It's hard enough to draw it as a two-dimensional shape <clears throat> on paper. But this distance right here between the center of the nucleus and the most likely location, this is in fact the Bohr radius. And the Bohr radius is about half an angstrom. It's something like 5 times 10 to the negative 11th meters. And this is the place that you would most likely find an electron. But there's some probability. Really, we have to do statistical mathematics at this time. So I'm going to make a graph here of probability as a function of radius. And you see, let's see, this will be probability of finding the electron at a certain distance. And you see that the probability peaks right here. So if I'm drawing this graph, I'm gonna come out like, uh, there's no chance of finding the electron actually at the nucleus, and we could talk about why some later time. There's a pretty good chance of finding it right there, and then there's not much chance of finding it farther out either. Interesting, and this distance right here, again, is the Bohr radius that was calculated by Bohr and explained by de Broglie. <clears throat> so that's a great start, but this is just the n equals one ground state. If you go to the n equals two level, stuff gets even nastier. I'll give you a positive charge at the middle, and then I'll say that there's a ring where there's high probability and another ring farther out where there's high probability. So if I put a billion dots on here, you'd start to see a little bit of a pattern. So this is n equals two. If I have a different case, like n equals two, oh, this is n equals two, l equals equals zero. Oh man, we've got an angular momentum quantum number two. This is an angular momentum. Sorry, this is a quantum number, n equals one, n equals two, and L oh, is another quantum number. You're gonna have a whole bunch of quantum numbers to pay attention to, but not this time around. Study some more physics. Take a quantum mechanics course. That will go into much greater detail. But this function, what if I were to draw this? I could probably draw this right down here. This function is a very interesting one. It will come up with a brief peak here and then a bigger peak right there. Oh, cool. So that's the n equals 2. Same graph axes. We're doing probability right here. That's awesome. Whoa, you can even have an n equals 2 L equals 1 state. And then you've got your positive charge in the middle. And you're gonna have this kind of crate. Watch this. Watch this. The probability is now not symmetric in a sphere anymore. We've got this blob of probability right here and another blob of probability right there. And there's this plane right here. And it's like a it's like a blown up balloon this direction and a blown up balloon the opposite direction. And the probability of finding the electron is in here really big. And maybe there's even a region in the middle of it. This is remember it is three dimensional, so you could rotate it this way and get very little change. And if you rotate it this way though, you'll get a huge change because well there's an axis here. Oh my gosh, you turn on a magnetic field, you've got a completely different game. If there are multiple electrons, you got a completely different game. And anyway, my point is this is why chemistry exists. All of this leads to chemistry. Goodbye.